worship here at Christ United Methodist Church. My name is Reverend Julie Henson, and I'm the pastor to this wonderful modern worship community. We would love to know that you are here today. So take a moment to check in through our check-in card. It's in the seat back in front of you. You can fill it out or scan the QR code to check in. Children are a vital part of worship here at Christ United Methodist Church. So we have children's bags in the back to engage them in worship, as well as tables on the side for them to sit and color and read books. If your kids have the wiggles or yell or wanna sing and dance, know that they are welcome in this space. The easiest way to connect here at Christ United Methodist Church is through our website at cumc.com slash connect, or you can visit our connect table in the atrium. There you will find the list of all of the upcoming events and studies and ways for you to plug in and dive deeper. Again, we are so excited you are in worship today. Welcome. Hi, good morning. Welcome to Christ United. We're so happy to have you here in this space. We're so happy to have all of our friends online with us. Um, it, it's finally starting to cool down, which is good. We love it. We love it. We love it. I get to wear a sweater to church today. Um, Got to brush the dust off of it, though, you know. Uh, if you are able in body or in spirit, will you stand and join us in worship today?
these two weeks, so last week and this week, we've been talking about community. And I feel like this space that we have together, it's such a beautiful picture of a community. You know, we show up time and time again, and we see the same faces, and we know each other's names, and we know what's going on at home. And so whenever we sat down to plan this week, it was kind of thinking about, oh, hey, what are songs about community? And then all of a sudden it was like, let's just sing the songs that we all know, the songs that kind of unite us as one. Uh, because like one of the most beautiful things that we can do together as a community is to sing, to raise our voices together, no matter if you're good or you're bad or you're mediocre, no matter if the lights are on or they're off, this is what we're called to do. This is what we're called to do together, one of the many things that we're called to do. So let's continue in worship today. Worthy of every song you could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Sing. Yeah. You're worthy of all. 
There's none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart. Lead me in your love to those around me. Would y'all pray with me? God, today we come into this place and we sing those words over and over again. I will build my life upon your love. Not I will build my Sunday upon this space or I will build my routine around our schedules and what's going on, but I will build my entire life, all that I am, all that I have, and it will be upon your love. Not what I think love is, not what I think ought to happen, but instead upon your love, God. God, there's so many times in the world where it just doesn't feel like enough. We give and we give and we're exhausted and we're stressed. So God, let this sanctuary, let this place today be a place of refuge where we live and reside in your love once again and are reminded of a love that covers us, covers our imperfections, covers our flaws, covers all the places where we fall short. Help us to come into this place today and worship the God of love that calls us once again back out into the world to help others build their lives on that same love. It's in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. You can be seated, and as you are being seated, if you would turn to somebody around you and say good morning and happy fall, and man, the weather feels good outside. so glad that y'all have joined us in worship today. My name is Julie Henson. I am the pastor to this wonderful modern worship community. And we are a community and we are in a sermon series about community today. And so we're going to talk about what that is all about. So I am so glad that you have joined us today. At the end of every row, there is a packet, a clear packet. And inside of it, it has a connect card, a prayer request card, and a giving card. I would love for you to take that fill out one of those and pass it down your row. Let us know you're here today. Let us know how we can be praying for you. And if you would like to give today, we want you to have the opportunity to do that through that giving card as well. It is a wonderful and beautiful time to be in the month and season of fall. And so we have so much coming up um, next week uh, in the evening, October 15th, we have what is called the meet and eat. Meet and eat, meet and eat. Anyway, say that three times fast. It's fun. We have a meet and eat. Thank you. Um, we have a meet and eat happening next Sunday evening uh, with our senior pastor, Chris Dowd. In this space, we do need you to register because food is involved. And so we want to be able to feed everyone. And so go ahead and register for that. It's going to be a great opportunity to gather as a church body and to talk about what we call the state of the church. Um, and for Chris to be able to answer questions for us about where where the church is and where we are heading. So be sure and be part of that. We still have a couple of slots left for our watch party the next night on October 16th. Now, depending on how the game goes tonight, we're going to need all the support we can get next Monday night at the Cowboys game against the Chargers. So um, that's going to be over at Legacy West, over at Legacy Hall. We have the whole third floor rented out. And so it's going to be a lot of fun. You can register for that at the link as well. And finally, we have Fall Fest coming up on October 22nd. Fall Fest is going to be a wonderful afternoon from 5 to 7 with trunk or treat and bounce houses and food and games. It is a wonderful time to come together as a church family. We would love for you to sign up for a trunk to sponsor a trunk. So that just means to decorate the trunk of your car and to give out candy. And so we want for the parking lot to be full of not only cars, but of trunks open so that our kids can go from car to car. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Again, we are thrilled that you are in worship today. We're gonna continue worship by affirming our faith together through our call to worship. It'll be on our screens.
God, renew us. Let our love be genuine in all that we do. As we struggle, may we hold on to what is good. When we lag in zeal, may we pour into others through our love and hospitality. May we live in harmony with one another as a community of faith. Let us rejoice in hope and share that hope with others. Amen. Let us continue worshiping together.
pour out our praise, we pour out our praise to your breath in our lungs. We pour out our praise to you. Will you pray with me? Holy God, you are the one that brings light to the darkness. We give you our broken hearts and you mend them. Lord, remind us that we are your children. Let us look for you. Let us seek you. Let us hear you. Let us feel you in this space, in every conversation that we have, in the interactions that we have with others and with ourselves, Lord. Remind us that you are the center of all of those things. We love you. And in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Paris, I'm changing my mind. I'm sorry. So I told Paris at the beginning of the service, I said, you know, most of our kids are going to be on fall break this week. We probably are not going to have any money. So let's just, let's, we'll skip over children's time this week. No, you are in this space. You are here. So if you were a kiddo, if you would come up and have children's time with me, it would make my heart so happy. Good morning. Oh, I'm so glad y'all are here today. Guess what? I know how to do something that you maybe don't know that I know how to do. But I'm going to need your help to do it. Because it doesn't sound right if I just do it by myself. Did anybody hear the thunderstorms on Wednesday? Do you remember the thunderstorms? It rained all night on Wednesday night. And my dog was losing his mind. He does not like thunderstorms. So he was just shaking like a leaf. Do you know that I know how to make a thunderstorm? Now, I don't know how to make it rain, and I don't, <laughs> that sounded funny, and I don't know how to make it look like it's raining in here, but I know how to make it sound like it's raining, but I'm going to need your help, okay? So I need you to follow me as we do these steps, okay? Ready? You can snap. We're going to start by snapping. job. Now, if I was doing that by myself, I would look kind of silly up here, wouldn't I? Just sitting up here snapping and clapping and doing different things. But when we all join together and we make the noise together, it sounds like really light rain. And then it sounds like it's getting louder and louder, just like a thunderstorm outside. So today we are talking about this big word called community. Can you say community? <laughs> community. But do you know what that means? It means that we are better together. Just like it is a much better thunderstorm when we all do it together, it is so much better at the church when you are here with me and I am here with you and we all get to be together. Can you say, we are better together? We are better together. Okay, awesome. Let's put our hands together and pray. God, we thank you for our children and for the ways in which they continue to share your love with us. Be with them this next week and help us to continue to share our love with them. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Okay, you can go back to your seats. So as I mentioned um, last week and as I mentioned earlier, I love the month of October. It is one of my uh, favorite months of the year, partially because the weather finally cools down and we get some cooler temps and we see the, the um, leaves begin to change colors. But one of the reasons that my uh, favorite month is October is because our family has all sorts of different birthdays in October. 
Just this past week, we had five. Five out of the seven days this past week between my husband's family and my family, we had five birthdays. So as you can imagine, I spent some time on the greeting card aisle. And I don't know about you, but I get pretty specific when I'm looking for a birthday card. I either need it to say all the things that I need it to say, or I need it just to say something funny. So one of the ones I saw said, four out of the five people get money on their birthday. And then you open the inside and it says, happy birthday number five. <laughs> and then another one I saw on the front said, for your eyes only. And then you open it and it says, please, as you are reading this card, read with diligence, maybe wipe a tear from your eye, act as though it is really meaningful. I owe you one, thanks. <laughs> And then, of course, you've got your really sentimental cards. You know, one of my siblings gave my grandfather last Sunday a really sentimental card. And she said in the middle of it, she said, I, I didn't write a whole lot in it because I felt like the card said everything it was supposed to say. And my grandfather sat there just like the card I had mentioned a second ago. And he got really misty-eyed and read it. And, and he said, yes, yes, it says exactly what it needs to say. And none of the rest of us ever knew what it said. <laughs> so we're in this two-week series around community, and we're reading from the book of Romans. Romans is a book in our Bible that is a letter that is written to the church in Rome by a man named Paul. Last week, we read the first part of chapter 12 that talked about us being the body of Christ, this metaphor of being the body of Christ. So last week's was about who is part of our community. And what Paul says is that we are the body of Christ and not one piece of the body is more important than the other. That every part of the body is essential. Sharing with us that it's not only important for us to show up, but to show up with all of who God has created us to be. That's what makes the body of Christ function. So if last week was all about who community is for, this week is about how we create that community. So we're reading the second part of that chapter um, in Romans, Romans chapter 12, starting in verse 9. Let me get to it real quick. All right. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. And pursue hospitality to strangers. So all throughout the letter to the Romans in the first 12 chapters to Rome, Paul is giving this beautiful, sophisticated theological explanation of what it means to follow Christ and to be the church. And then in chapter 12, it starts with this word, therefore. So what Paul is saying to us here in the, chap the 12th chapter of Romans is, okay, so, so what? So what does this mean to us? Therefore. Be the body of Christ. Therefore, this is who this community is for. Therefore, this is how your community is supposed to look and live. And those first words that we read in chapter um, 12, starting in verse 9, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. When I begin to read this very short passage, 9 through 13, what I begin to realize is that it seems sort of sentimental. It's almost as though Paul is giving us some punchlines to a good greeting card. Let your love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Persevere. But there's something so much deeper going on in this scripture today. Paul is not just being sentimental. He is following some of the most ancient texts we have in scripture. When he is talking to the people in Rome and telling them how to be a community, he is actually echoing back to a sentiment that we find at the very beginning of scripture in chapter two of Genesis. 
We read the creation story in chapter 1, and we read a different version of the creation story in chapter 2. But what we read in chapter 2 is after God creates the heavens and the earth, God creates man. And then what does God say? It is not good for man to be alone. It is not good for man to be alone. What Paul recognizes in creating this community is something that God created us for in the very beginning, is that it is not good for us to be alone. We are not created to be alone. Loneliness is an epidemic, probably one that you have heard about for the past four years or more. What we find in our society today and in our culture is that loneliness, even before the pandemic, was an epidemic that was scanning across not only our elderly age, but across all generations and ages and stages of life. I think about the children who, for one reason or another, are separated from their parents or from their family. I think about the teenager who's wondering at night if they have any friends or how they're going to meet all the expectations that are put on them. I wonder about the college student that is trying to find community in a brand new place. I wonder about the new family who just moved in the neighborhood, who has the beautiful new house but doesn't know a single soul in town and how quiet it can get at night. I wonder about the person who just lost their job, who has to go and pack up their things by themselves, and that sense of community or identity no longer feels stable. I wonder about the person who just received an unwanted diagnosis, and how even though you are sitting with maybe a family member or the doctor or you're reading it on a screen, how lonely that can feel. The spouse who lost their partner and is living at a home by themselves, not knowing how to be in that space without their other half. Or the elderly person who is living in an assisted living place, looking for a community, reaching out, but not quite knowing how to get it. God says to us at the very beginning of creation, at the very beginning of scripture, that part of who we are is to be in connection to one another. It is not good for us to be alone. So when we hear Paul's words, and we hear Paul say to us, let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another, Don't lack in zeal, but be ardent in spirit, rejoice in hope, patient in affliction, persevere, contribute, and pursue hospitality. When we hear Paul's words about how to be in community, what we hear is Paul saying to us, it is not good to be alone. And if we are called to be connected, there is a way for us to do that that is Christ-like. Teddy Roosevelt has this very famous quote that is always striking to me that it was Teddy Roosevelt that said it. He's known for saying, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. No one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Now this is Teddy Roosevelt, this very tough guy who is known for putting together these men called the Rough Riders and who is talked about as someone who is rough and strong. And he is the one who says that nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Friends, I believe at the heart of everything we do as a community, it's about caring. Caring for each other and caring for those outside the walls of this church. Now, if that may sound a little sentimental to you, I get that. In the same way that if we only read Paul's words once and we don't put them on our heart, they can maybe just sound sentimental. Dr. Rochelle Stackhouse says this about Paul's letter. She says, it's not simply a greeting card slogan, but it is a call to costly discipleship. If you put these words in front of you this week, 
just these short verses, 9 through 13 of chapter 12, what does that look like for you? Because what we find is that this is actually a call to costly discipleship. This is what it looks like to follow Jesus. There are many communities around us. The word community is probably even overused right now in our culture and society. But what makes a Christian community different? What distinguishes us? What sets us apart? It's in our name. It's in the name of this church, Christ. A Christian community is one that not only gathers together or comes together in order to care for one another, but we come together to care for one another in the same way that Christ cares for us. What Christ modeled for us, what Jesus taught us to do. Jesus allowed his life to be interrupted over and over and over again to be in relationship with people. Jesus talked to those who were highly intellectual and had a lot of power, and he also sat with a woman at a well who no one would talk to. Jesus called a man out of a tree who was ashamed to even talk to Jesus. And Jesus called a man out of a tomb who he called his dear friend. Jesus teaches us over and over again to let our love be sincere. I love this piece of scripture, but one thing that I wish was added to it that would be good for my modern ears that I have to say to myself as I read this scripture, especially in reference to understanding how we do community. I wish the words, some assembly acquired, were part of Paul's text. Do you ever just hear yourself exhale when you see those words? Some assembly acquired, especially if you've ordered something online and you thought it came put together and it wasn't. And so now what you thought would be sitting in your house or be beautiful, you now have spent hours and hours on because it said these small words in fine print, some assembly are required. Love must be sincere. This is going to take some diligence on our part. It's going to take some consistent practice on our part. It's going to take some assembling on our part. Some assembly require. You see, a community is one that gathers together. It's at the core of who we are. As a Christian community, we gather together with the distinguishing elements of Christ. But we assemble We come together. But I wonder sometimes what keeps people from coming together, coming into the doors of the church. What keeps a person from assembling with us, with a Christian community? Maybe that word shame, maybe that word vulnerability. If we think back once again to the very beginning of scripture, after God creates man and woman, Adam and Eve, and the first, what we call the original sin in chapter three of Genesis happens. What we hear is that they realize they are naked and afraid. Now that word naked in Hebrew is translated as vulnerable. Adam and Eve realized they were vulnerable and afraid. Maybe one of the reasons that we need community and we need one another so desperately is because we are all vulnerable. We live in a vulnerable world. And when we're aware of it, each one of us feels vulnerable in very different ways. That word vulnerability has been another word like community that is said a lot these days by one of my favorite authors and speakers, um, Brene Brown. Uh, Several, several years ago now, she really came to the scene by talking about vulnerability through a TED Talk that over 43 million people have viewed on YouTube. But what she says in that TED Talk about vulnerability is this that we cannot selectively numb our emotions. 
We shouldn't numb our vulnerability because we need community, but often we think that we can numb selectively the, the emotions that we do not want to deal with. She says, as a cohort in the U.S. history, we are the most in debt, the most obese, the most addicted, and the most medicated that the United States has ever been. And she says that part of the reason for this is because we spend an awful lot of time thinking that we can selectively numb certain emotions. We could selectively numb our fear. We can selectively numb our anger or our shame. But what she says happens in the midst of that is when we try to selectively numb or repress or not deal with the things we don't want to deal with, we also miss out on joy. We also miss out on gratitude. We miss out on purpose and we miss out on meaning. That's what community is all about. Some assembly required means bringing all of us, just like we talked about last week, not just showing up, but showing up with all of who we are. Because what happens when we don't bring the real parts, the vulnerable parts, the honest parts of our lives is that we then miss out on what community, and especially a Christian community like the church, has to offer us. Let love be genuine. Let love be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Paul is offering an opportunity for the community in Rome and an opportunity for us today to look once again and to see that this community is one that is founded and centered over and over again on a grace and a love that sometimes we can't comprehend on our own. We need each other not only to understand joy and gratitude and meaning and purpose, but we need each other to understand the abundant life that Jesus talked about. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. I have come so that you might have life and have it to the abundance. That you might have life and have it to the fullest. Jesus doesn't promise us a life that is easy if we're in community or a life that is free from all of those negative emotions or an ability to, to negatively or to select out the ones that, the emotions that we want to numb. Jesus says instead, if you want the fullness of life, the abundance of life, you've got to come with all of you. And my hope and my prayer is that what you'll find is a community of faith that is willing to welcome you love you the way that Christ loves us. That's the kind of community that Christ has called us to. This is why we need each other. This past week, I, um, I sent out in my uh, Friday email a poem written by Jan Richardson. Jan Richardson is an author and a poet that I go to over and over again. Her words um, and her books of poetry continue to speak to me. Uh, she's a woman who lost her husband to a terminal uh, cancer diagnosis, and in that chose to be really vulnerable and write through it. Now, I'm not someone who has lost someone close to me from a cancer diagnosis, but what I found and continue to find by reading Jan's words is that she's constantly connecting to me. By sharing her story, she's connecting to me. By being vulnerable about where she is, she connects to me. And she wrote several years ago um, a poem called A Blessing Called Sanctuary. And when I looked it up the other day to send it to you on Friday, I thought, gosh, this is so good. I just need to share it with you one more time. Here's what she says in it. You hardly knew how hungry you were to be gathered in, to receive the welcome that invited you to enter entirely. Nothing of you foreign or strange, nothing of your life that you were asked to leave behind or to carry in silence or in shame. Tentative steps became settling in, leaning into the blessing that enfolded you, taking your place in the circle that stunned you with its unimagined grace. You began to breathe again, 
to move without fear, to speak with abandon. The words you carried in your bones that echoed in your being, you learned to sing. But the deal with this blessing is that it will not leave you alone. It will not let you linger in safety or status. The time will come when this blessing will ask you to leave, not because it has tired of you, but because it desires for you to become the sanctuary that you have found, to speak your word into the world, to tell what you have heard with your own ears, seen with your own eyes, known in your own heart, that you are a beloved, precious child of God, beautiful to behold, and you are welcome and more than welcome here. some assembly required. It's important for us to gather personally so that we can be real with each other, so that we are not self-selecting and numbing, but instead being honest about where we are and who we are and choosing to walk together as a family of faith. That's discipleship. Jesus' disciples did not walk alone. They gathered together some assembly required for us as a community. Not only for the feelings that we feel, can you hear yourself in these words? That moment when you felt known, that moment when you felt like you belonged or that you could sing again or that you could be who you are. And then she does this really mean thing where she says the time will come where this blessing will ask you to leave. Not because it is tired of you, but because it desires for you, desires for you to become the sanctuary that you have found. My hope and prayer for this community right here in this room is that we not only feel sanctuary and refuge for ourselves in this place, but that it so calls us back out into the world, back out into our lives to help someone else find that same sanctuary. To build our lives upon your love, it is a firm foundation. Put our trust in you alone, not be shaken. Over and over again, Jesus says these unkind words to us, you have to go. In what's called Ascension Sunday, after the resurrection, Jesus appears back to his followers for 40 days, and then he ascends into heaven. And I imagine the disciples and the followers that are looking at him are looking up at Jesus' feet as he is floating up in the clouds, wondering, what am I supposed to do next? And Jesus says, you know, some assembly required. If there was a greeting card for this community, my prayer is is that on the front it says, welcome. And on the inside it says, some assembly required. Let's pray. God, today we give you thanks for the gift that is called the body of Christ, for the gift of community, for the ways in which people that have been so dear to us have drawn us into this place that that have helped us find you, that people that have helped us forgive, the people that help us see who we are again and see who you are. God, community is so, so sacred. But it asks something of us. It asks us not only to be part of it and to be part of it with all of who we are, but it asks us to do so in a way that is modeled in the same way that Christ modeled it. With love that is genuine, with a grace that is abounding. So God, today as we leave this place, recognizing once again that you call us back out into the world, help us to see the people who are experiencing loneliness. Help us to hear your words about our creation. It is not good for us to be alone. 
We thank you, God, that you made us for each other. And we thank you that you made us in your image with the capacity for the same love and grace that you have extended to us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
That word benediction means blessing. And that word amen means may it be so. So my blessing for you today is that may it be so that the love that is poured out to us by God and God's grace that we sing about, oh, how he loves us. May you not only be blessed by that love this week, but may you pour out that love into the community that so desperately needs to hear it around you. May it be so. Amen. Amen. If you are able in body or in spirit, will you stand and sing this last song with us? Have a blessed week and we'll see you next time.